In this video, we're going to discuss the NECA Ultimate Biff Tannen from Back to the Future 2. Welcome to the Swear Wolves Horror Podcast YouTube channel. I'm Brett. If you're a returning subscriber, I just want to thank you for coming back. And if you're new to this channel, I want to thank you for stopping by. Please consider clicking the subscribe button as well as that notification bell below. We upload videos on a regular basis in which we review anything and everything horror, from action figures and toys to soundtracks, various collectibles, video games, you name it. But today, we're diverging. We're continuing our diverging path from horror, and we're going to talk about this Back to the Future figure. I've done a couple of other videos on these Back to the Future figures that I've gotten. Um, Marty McFly from the 1985 Back to the Future movie. And then I did a follow-up video of the Marty McFly from Back to the Future 2. This is another Back to the Future 2 figure, although this is a 1955 version of Biff Tannen. But uh, it, you can tell that it's Back to the Future 2 because we got Gray's Sports Almanac, which is a big part of Back to the Future. Well, it's the main storyline of Back to the Future Part 2. I really love this cover art here. Uh, Gray Sports Almanac complete sports statistics from 1950 to 2000, including baseball, football, boxing, horse racing, and more. This is how Biff in the future gets Biff in the past to get a lot of money, and it ruins 1985, and, you know, chaos ensues. And that's when we got a storyline. Side of the box just says Ultimate Biff Tannen, and of course we got the DeLorean saying Out of Time, and then we got a photo of Biff Tannen right here, and at the bottom it says Collect Them All, the 35th Anniversary Collection. We talked about the Marty McFlies, both of these, now we're talking about Biff. There is also a Marty McFly Tales from Space uh, Ultimate figure, and then a Doc Brown from 1955, which I think is coming out in January, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, anyway, my good friend David got this for me as an early Christmas present. Uh, David is the other swear wolf, so just want to thank him for that. But, uh, like I said, we do have a picture of Biff right here, and then a little write-up. It says, uh, Marty McFly and Doc Brown experience the adventure of a lifetime in an unlikely time machine as they travel to the past, present, and future, setting off a time-shattering chain reaction that disrupts the space-time continuum. What this figure includes, the almanac and case, car repair invoice, enchantment under the sea dance flyer, and interchangeable head and hands. Like with all the NECA Ultimates, flap opens up to reveal the figure right here. And then of course, we have Biff standing uh, in the town square. Why don't we go ahead and get this figure opened and uh, give it a review. All right. We got the figure opened. Before we get to the figure itself, let's talk about these accessories. We got a few different uh, accessories. Not too many major accessories, but uh, some cool ones nonetheless. We got some alternate hands here. So this is Biff's right hand posed in a fist. Like he's going to punch somebody. Maybe he's going to punch Calvin Klein. Who knows? This is his left hand, also posed in a fist. And NECA does a good job with the details of these um, hands, and I really like that. I've talked about it in the other reviews that I've done. And then we got him kind of with his hand like he could be holding something right there. So that's another right hand. He also comes with a couple of different paper goods. This is his Western Auto Stores invoice bodywork cleaning and detailing, manure removal, and then cans of oil. He got free cans of oil. So that all happened on November 22nd, 1955. And then the Saturday night dance, Enchantment Under the Sea, Be There or Be Square. Also comes with the, of course, the sports almanac, which looks a lot like that right there. It doesn't open up, but it does look like a book, and it's got a little bit of a write-up on the back here. I'm not going to bother to read that. My eyes will go cross if I do. And then we have the little case in which the almanac gets thrown into by the principal whose name escapes me right now. What is his name? Oh gosh. By the principal. You can comment down below that you knew it and I didn't, but it's the principal. And then uh, got copies of Ooh La La in here. 
which is kind of cool. These are all, um, they're not painted on or, or stickers or anything. They're actually three dimensionals, but they don't come out. They're like glued in. You can put the sports almanac in there if you'd like. But let's move on to the other things. Uh, we also got an alternate head here where uh, an angry, more talking Biff is. And the likeness to Thomas F. Wilson, who plays uh, Biff, of course, is awesome. They did a bang-up job on this. And I like the detail and the coloring and everything. The haircut, that flat-top haircut from 1955... So they just did a really good job. Why don't we go ahead and talk about the figure. I uh, just opened up the figure and just from taking it out of the package before I started recording, I was like, I, I dig this figure. Um, but let's talk about the articulation before we get into the details. Uh, like most NECA Ultimates, we got a ball joint on top. The head can move back and forth, side to side, up and down. You got the same thing kind of in the shoulder. Can move out, back and forth. You got these double joints in the elbow which let him bend his elbow more naturally, I guess. The hand turns, and uh, eh, it doesn't do too much of a pivoting here. Biff does turn at the waist, and he does his ab crunch. We also have a, a little ball joint right there uh, in the uh, hip, and then the knee bends, and then, of course, his foot does um, kind of side to side and then up and down. The detail is great in this. Like I said, the likeness to Thomas F. Wilson is awesome. I think they just did such a bang up job on this figure. Uh, I do like this head sculpt probably better than the other head sculpt. So this is the one that I'll keep on him, um, but they're both really good. His jacket is really cool. It's this textured soft rubber here. It's it's very uh, fine texture. It almost feels, I know it's, it's rubber, but it almost feels suede like the zipper even. And the, the detail on that it just looks metallic. The cuffs right there. And then the back side of the, of the jacket. You can see that texture that I'm talking about. Causes it to have this really cool feeling. And then, of course, the, the folds and the wrinkles in it just add to the life-like look of this jacket. Just has a pair of jeans right here rolled up at the at the cuffs of the jeans and then his black shoes and white socks he's a he's a 50s kid through and through uh as far as posing him like i said i'll probably just pose him plain and simple um maybe with this hand and holding on to the sports almanac and then maybe i'll put this uh, little bin right at the base right here but uh why don't i go ahead and do that and we'll be right back to take a look at what it looks like all right, I got the figure posed how I want him to be, and I think this is a, a nice way to display him, just holding the sports almanac. And then, of course, we got the lockbox right here with the copy of Ooh La La that you can see. But just a really nice figure. I think it'll display really well next to uh, the Marty McFly. Uh, the Marty McFly is actually that I have. And then once I get the other figures, it'll be nice to have that cool display. So as far as I'm concerned... I know you guys probably hate hearing me say this, but this gets five out of five Pamela Voorhees heads for me. But if you have any alternate thoughts or anything you want to add, go ahead and comment down below. And if you like this, Principal Strickland, Principal Strickland is his name. If you like this video, please click the like button below. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed and you feel so inclined, click both that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. We are the Swearwolves Horror Podcast, and we do a weekly show in which we review horror movies. So please check us out by searching for The Swearwolves, wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Uh, you can also check out our website at theswearwolves.com. So for The Swearwolves, I'm Brett. Hi, this is Brett with the Swearwolves. When I'm not editing videos or creating content for YouTube, I just sit here and wait and wait. If you like the video that you just saw, go ahead and click that button right there. And if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and click that other button right there. I'll wait. <laughs>